children was the original conversation started around getting your closet in order that's what blows up our DMs the most is how do I get my closet organized I can get my head straight etc and so if you read um, the good ick right now I've really taken a deep dive in there and I'm asking you guys to think about this in certain ways so that you can help unravel this and then help solve your own problems which is always good so we asked you yesterday, or I asked you to, and Katura, you did, yes. yeah, right. Katura's over there, she'll be on in a second. Um, I asked you to tell me which items were giving you the most problems. issues, most problems, and why. To clarify, we're talking about clothing, not your clothing, not, not your children. children. <laughs> yeah, sorry. This is a uh, thing about style here. Charlie calls later. Charlie, yeah, we'll check in with Charlie later. Um, so. What you guys started out with is you sent me a whole host of pictures. Katura, you had tons of pictures. Mm -hmm. But the thing was is, even though the pictures were wildly varied, mm -hmm. they weren't all over the place. They all really came down to a few common denominators. And what we found the most often was, when you had things that weren't working for you, Bigs and Pigs was a big culprit, yeah. right? You were sending over prints or bright top a lot of prints and it, this is really interesting because your prints like number one on the problem child yeah. list were prints so you sent over a lot of prints that you had issues with a lot of bright colors uh, and we'll go do a deeper dive into what the solutions are there you also sent in things that were deceptive like you thought that they were going to be amazing but they didn't really work and in that category the rule of three that's really important. Exactly. The, that was really like coming to the top. And so we'll deep dive into that because we know that that one can be a little bit nuanced, tricky, but once you figure it out, then you know. Then you know, and the sky is open up. And then, of course, an overarching thing was CMC, Chill Modern Classic. It ultimately came back to the item neither being chill, nor modern, nor classic, or maybe just two right. of the three, et cetera. So the way that we want to frame today's discussion is, first of all, when you're doing the closet purge or deciding what to purchase or deciding what to move on for someone else to give away as a gift, what's really important to understand is, what are the expectations of that item? Yeah. Why did you buy it? And how much do you expect to get out of something? And so when we talk about our classifying different segments in our own closets, we look at our woofs, our in and outs, and our had to haves. So a quick reminder, a woof is your without fail. They are those items that no matter what you are putting on, they immediately ground you and they allow you to see yourself in them. Woofs can be worn head to toe, but they're not. Yeah, but they don't have to be. They don't, certainly don't have to be. Um, the next, and woofs, you know, if you're building a pyramid. They're at the bottom. They're at the bottom, they're, and they're, it's a thick it's base. It's like, what's, what's the bottom of the Um, it's the like bottom. <laughs> Sorry, I'm know, just like, probably manipulated by whatever our farming, anyways. Sorry. <laughs> Different conversation. For Different conversation. For people who know something. Let us know. <laughs> we don't. Exactly. Um, okay, so woofs are your basics, your bottoms. Basics that are anything but basic. The next level are your in and outs. Those are items that you bought with the expectation that they would make you really happy. They make you feel something. Yeah, like emotion. Like they talked at you emotionally. You mm -hmm. saw it, and immediately you felt differently than you had before. Exactly, and you wanted it in your life. It would help you feel really present. And then the last category was the had to have, mm -hmm. and those are things that are supercharged emotionally maybe have no rational being at all to anything about mm -hmm. 
what you consider your personality or your style to be, but you bought it anyways, right? And so on a pyramid, the had to haves are the very tippy tippy top. So that's your smallest area right there. So let's start with the in and outs, because those were the ones that were like way, way, way at the top of the food chain on problems. Totally. So this jacket is a really good example of yeah. something that it's not a without fail. No. Like you're not throwing it on with everything. No, going. definitely not. So, so well, I'll just start with, I'm wearing, I would say that like the Sid Jean in a classic wash for me is definitely becoming a woof. Mm -hmm. um, I think it obviously is chill, modern, and classic, but it's definitely bolder, which I think goes in line with my modifier. And then I'm wearing a Giselle tank. Um, but this jacket is, I'll go close up, it's brown and black and white stripes. So it's pretty much a play on like a traditional athletic jacket. Um, I think the brown, although that is like a neutral color, is kind of unexpected for a more sports jacket. And for me, it really is a good in and out because I can immediately wear it with something super casual, but I could also wear it with something that's stressy to tone that down. Um, but because it's light and weight, I really am really going to consider it as an outerwear piece for, I would say, like March through the beginning of summer, and then as a good layering piece, but it definitely will not be holding its own. Can you talk about your shoes a little bit as that plays into the pool? Yeah, so I'm, I'm sure. sure I, I sure yeah. can. Well, I got injured, so for, not for these ones. Um, okay, so these shoes are, um, they're Alaya, they're white leather ballet flats. I also have them in black and I got injured the first time I got them. I bought them when I was in Paris um, during market. Something that we do, that Amy I and Tracy do, is we do a lot of research while we're there. We see you know, what's out on the streets, what's out the stores, what people are buying, how we're inspired. These really inspired me. Um, I think the juxtaposition between these shoes and the denim and the track jacket, um, these are all really like traditional heritage materials. I think a ballet flat is super classic, mm -hmm. but the giant rhinestones definitely are loud. Um, but because everything I'm wearing is so subdued, mm -hmm. I think that it works. Yeah, yeah, and I think, so what I'm gonna point out here is when we talk about an in and out that is giving you a problem because you can't figure out how to right. style it, any in and out, if you, our creative pragmatists, if you live in that balance of creativity and pragmatism and chill, modern, and classic are somewhere in those roots of your DNA, then any in and out is going to work perfectly with your fundamental pieces. So it's right. without fail. So this works here. You would wear it I with could the literally, sand I, I mean, I could put it on with literally with the black nylon. Like yeah. this would go with everything in your closet. Pretty much. And you would yes. feel like yourself. Like I, I literally have these pants, and I would wear this together. Exactly. Again, these are kind of two neutrals, but a little bit unexpected, which again is more in line with my personal style. So an in and out should not require that you create an entire row of foundational okay. elements. It should lead right into my you slip, your slip dresses, totally. the slip skirt from spring. It's exactly. So that's what you want to make sure of for an in and out. And so this is an example that um, one of you guys sent to me of one questioning on whether or not you should keep it. You had a bunch of stuff from RL. And the thing is, is we've all had our moments where you're kind of inexplicably drawn to something and you make the purchase. But here, what I want to describe is the differences in this RL top, this is literally right out of the costume set from like the 1923, like Yellow from, from Yellowstone, right? He does so, have a ranch. Right. And so knowing that, okay, like maybe there's a moment where you do want to wear it with jeans and a sandal and you're going to the farmer's market. Maybe you're wearing it with like a white nylon tri pant with the sleeves roll. You know, maybe you found some ways that you can wear it. So if you bought this, you did, and it's important to you to really try and find a way to solve it because you've got some connection to it, then kind of set your expectations. You're not gonna be wearing this with very much 
in your closet. And it's not because it isn't great. I mean, we are talking about Ralph Lauren here and we're not, I don't, all the designers are really great within their with what world of which they do. Yeah. Right. So, you know, we're, we're very different. And so for me, what you've, and for you, obviously, because you've, this became your problem child, the reason why it's a problem is because it's, it is chill, right? I mean, it's kind of chill, but like the buttons and everything, it really lacks modernity. Yeah. Um, it's a little classic for the time. It's not chill. I take that back. I don't it think it's not. chill. I think, like, I think if you didn't know it was Ralph Lauren, I don't think you would think it was chill, modern, or classic. No, it's right. So you, Pulse right. Space. So it's so it's one of those things where recognizing that you're drawn to something, but when you cannot check off chill or modern or classic, or if you can't at least check off two of those elements. It is completely unlikely that it is going to make the cut for the long one. Can, do you mind grabbing that purple blazer for me? Yep. So I'm gonna give you an example of an in and out for me here. That this was from, um, I think like our 2016 runway show maybe. And this was when, I mean it was so much about like sorbet colored mm -hmm. suiting, but that was like such a moment. Mm -hmm. And so we did this purple blazer and for me, um, I'm not really in right now into like a big bright color blazer. I'm just not. But the thing is, is I'm going to just pack and hold him for a while yeah. because he is absolutely modern. It's classic. It's definitely chill and easy. So it's checking off chill, modern, and classic. I'm just not in the mood for totally. it right now. But it's got all the key indicators. Like, this this food is still fresh. Like, you know, <laughs> like it is not gone bad. I mean, it in is, fact, like, you know, this is a blazer that we have been working to, like, reuse the foundation for for future. It, exactly. So this is deciding on, you know, when, that's why I said um, in the good ick, when you read it, is that when you have those magazine articles that start off with it, like, if you haven't won it in six weeks, throw it away. Like, bullshit. Because, like, you have to tailor it to you as an individual, like, something that is emotionally charged for you. The person telling you to throw that away or to donate or what have you, like, they might not know the story. They might not feel the same way. It really is individualized. Yeah. So, that's rude. Um, but it's really just figuring out, does something retain those core elements? And so, a lot of you guys sent me... Um, Oh, do you have your, can you grab your printed skirt? Mm -hmm. the, the Prada one. Do you want me to put it on? or No, I'm just it spray it in. Like, mm -hmm. Well, I think this is a good one too, the Tibby one as well. Oh, yeah. So what I talk about in the good ick is also understanding, like, what are those moments when you felt really good in something and you've kind of cataloged why you felt good. So what I show you in that, uh, blog post is that I felt really great when I was wearing, it was a black blazer, it was a white t-shirt, it was Levi's and a pair of Adidas stance. You can completely be now. If you did a side by side, it right. would be you today. The thing is, if I had said, okay, my style is a blazer and denim and sneakers, well then I could easily come up then with a really fitted, shrunken, princess scene blazer, maybe with some studs. Skinny jeans. Skinny, like super low rise, cut out jeans, and maybe, I don't know, a Polka embellished or sneaker or something. Yeah. And then, that would not have been my style. So my style wasn't blazer, jeans, and a sneaker. Right. My style was still chill and modern and classic. And you've got to dial it back to that. So a lot of you guys sent in printed pieces that you had bought that just were not working. And this is a good example. So this for me is, this is like the original, like one of the most original Tibbies. You'll see the green tag was in it. And I love this skirt and I still do because it was, even though it's not icky, it was a four ply silk. The body is so classic for me, slip skirt. And it was so chill for me. Okay, so maybe, it lacked a little bit of modernity, but it was still very chill and classic. And at the time, this was my first like Harper's Bazaar full page. 
And I remember Plum Sykes from Vogue, the Vogue editor at the time, she was wearing it with a little white t-shirt and this helmet lang, uh, helmet lang, good old helmet lang, uh, jean jacket. So I'm not going to lose this. I don't want to throw it away. It's still very clean and I would keep this. And look, it's not gonna take up very much room in my closet, um, but he's a keeper because He's got two of my CMCs in there, yep. right? Mm -hmm. This printed skirt, the in and out this was the Prada skirt. And this is what we talk about. When you talk about bigs and pigs, remember, Iggs is icky, glossy, or sculptural. This print is very sculptural. Like, it has a real point of view yeah. to it. You would never have bought this if it were just like a silk flounce uh, no, skirt. No, I'm sure. I, mean, I just bought it for the structure. Um, bought it for the giant banana print. The oh, green bananas. The it's fabric. Um, this was just like one of my favorite product collections. Um, really bright, spring 2011. Um, and I bought this on eBay like a few years after because I definitely like have favorites that I've seen and I think about for a long time, which I'm sure like all of us do things that we've seen online or at a store yep. or on a runway. And I saw this and I was like, I. This really speaks to me. I'm emotionally charged by it. Um, and, you know, when I first got it, I was like, okay, well, it's definitely chill. It's definitely modern. But, like, how am I going to wear it? And I really did have to think about it sure. because I really, really loved it. And I have obviously made fashion purchases that I regret. We all have. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the more that I thought about, you know, my modifier and which is risk taker, um, and just like my love for bright colors and yep. structure and like the fashion, like the true like fashion, fashion. like like really pushing forward. Um, I definitely like lean, really creative. And I just realized that like this was something that I could just put with really like fundamental without fail pieces, like this tank Big top. Big sweater, your store. Totally, like yeah, I would yeah. wear it with this tank top and a sneaker or a yep. more simple shoe and just really have that be like the hero piece of my outfit. So this is a good example of like, it is setting your expectations. Sure. Like where, how much work does this need to do? So if you're really like carving out your budget and investing in your closet, if you were just starting out, like you're like, please don't start there, right? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. This is like, you know, these are the add-on pieces that you, you want to, buy them so smartly that if you bought this at age 28, if I had bought that at age 28, I would still have it today in right. my closet. I would True. never get rid of him because he hit all the marks and I have my expectations that I'm wearing him. You know, maybe at that point it's three times a year, right? Totally. Totally. So getting your expectations set right because that will help you really inform where you want to invest. I like so, what you said about the skirt too, you were able to fold it up so it doesn't take a lot of real estate in your wardrobe. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think when things take a lot of real estate for me, it gives me a lot of anxiety oh, and yeah. I'm gonna let them go. Um, I had sure. to have this, so I just wanna back up into the Mary Pant. This has become yeah. my, like, my, um, without fail for sure. I wear it probably, I tell, tell you guys I wear it three times a week. Yeah. And this is a piece that I brought in that was my problem child. Mm -hmm. Now it's not really a problem because I love it, like I was right. actually said emotionally charged by it, but what can I do with this? This is a standalone piece. So yes. it's not a top that I'm carrying back to this, it's a dress. Yeah. Today I have on the alley, Yeah. right? And so it just simplifies it a little bit and lets it stand on, on its own. Also, it has to me a, a modernity about it. It's from Montgomery Wards and I got it in Santa Fe. But the zipper is kind of icky. Yep. The fabric is very icky, and the print reminds me, it's nostalgic, it reminds me of my grandmother. Um, and the moo-moos, you know, that kind of like a grandma would wear if she's cooking something or like around the house, like a house coat. Yeah. So. so I think this is, a, a, again, a good example, though, of setting your expectations on how you can wear this mm -hmm. and how often. Right. And so when you had put that on earlier with the sandal, you looked like you were just on a great vacation really chilled out or your friends coming over for barbecue or whatever right right just how I wear it so this is where you know sometimes you guys write to me and you're like well I invested in this dress so please show me ways that I can wear it to the office and I'm like no I'm not because I can't I cannot do that in good faith 
And it's not because this is bad style, it's because wearing the clothing in such a different way than it was intended usually feels off for a reason. It's not like fun and ironic, it usually just kind of feels off. Remember our conversation we were talking about like not being thoughtful about what you purchase and also being thoughtful about the end use. Yeah. So I think that's something that's like a mindset shift. Yeah. Which is why all of my without fails that I have now, I have to build into have to haves and in and outs because I have yeah. so many without fails. I kind of overperched, which is a thing, right? We're like, get it all out. I'm not in that stage of life anymore. I'm not that person or I'm not, you know, I'm not going to those places. I don't want it. And then you're like, shit, shoot. <laughs> okay. But listen, so you talked about over purging. You mentioned mm -hmm. that earlier. Yep. So knowing what we just talked about with taking the in and out through the lens of is it chill modern and classic or is it at least two of the three, would that have helped you purge less? Totally. Or, which is reminding me of this thing. Yeah. For me. Yeah. I because know. this is your so this your is, keeper guy. Yeah, yeah. This is like yeah. a lot of my emotional purchases <laughs> that are really cool and fun. Now I feel like okay, this is. I feel like it's not modern per se, but it's denim, it's a Levi that's been redone, and I wear that back to my wall. So now I'm gonna wear this with this sweatshirt, wear it with a super chilled out shoe, and I feel like it gives me. Yeah, and I even think like, hey, um, can one of y'all bring over the a navy blue sweatshirt? Yep. Because I think one thing too that. is like, if, if this was sort of, um, throwing you because it was a lot, mm -hmm. right? This is where you talk about fixing things in your closet. So if this feels like a lot and you're wanting to make this work, I think one easy trick is instead of wearing the cream, I would go, thank you, just switching it with something navy blue, like the navy blue sweater or the navy blue t-shirt or na just like calms everything mm -hmm. down, right? So this is how you wanna just like play around and find what's comfortable to you, but know that like you're probably not wearing those. Right, I'm not wearing these every day, and that navy feels so classic to me. Um, that that balances that out? Totally balances it out. Yeah, exactly. So that is what your without fails are really meant to do. Um, the other thing that came up a lot in the closet, in, in the closet discussions was a lot of you had, um, like you were pissed at these purchases these pieces, right. that you made. Like they were, you were going into your closet and they were really pissing you off. And the thing is, is you need to kind of divide that category up and think like, okay, why is it pissing me off and what can I do about it? And so it was usually, it came down though to one of two things. You were like, well, I have it and maybe I'm not angry about it. I never ever wear it, but it reminds me of something. So it reminds you of something bad, like I would say, right. kind of pack it up. But there was a sentimental moment to a lot of these pieces mm -hmm. and a lot of people were just conflicted about what to do with that. Do right. I keep it? Do I not keep it? And I had one whole exchange with a woman and she was like, this reminds me of my mom. My mom has passed and I just want, I want to be able to wear it. And I was like, okay, you really are unlikely to wear that item, but don't toss it. Yeah. Like, let it. Would you say don't throw, well, whatever that, we can't say that, but don't throw the baby out. Like, you don't have to don't get Don't throw the rid baby of, out with the bath water. Yeah, you don't like, have to, like, let it go, per se. Maybe it'll, you'll have a reason. Just keep that. And no, but that. know that that's why it's there. Yeah. Like, if I'm walking into my closet, every day i mean my husband did that when his both of his parents passed like there are just these things so i have this ring on it's like little things like that just remind you and they can, yeah. so you can carry them with you or you can have them available for you to just see yeah. and appreciate and so sometimes that comes in the form of clothing so if you mm -hmm. walk into your closet every day and you get that little reminder of your mom that's yeah. a nice thing and she was like you know what i've got the room i'm gonna do that it's one jacket yeah i can do that What's the second? So the second one was people figuring out like, okay, I really do need to get rid of this, but I spent yeah, way too much money <laughs> on it. I don't want to get rid of it because I'm not going to get the return on it. So I think this is where you want to try and flip it on its head and turn it into something good. Mm -hmm. So the example that I brought, I'm going to show you some purges mm -hmm. from my part because uh, and how I'm going to handle them. I know you're like 
put my name at the top. But what I'm going to do is I brought a few pieces here, and I'm going to any of our team members. But and I'm sorry, only if you're watching. <laughs> Just joking. Yeah. But any of our employees, I'm going to have them put their name into a hat. St. Simons and New York Story all are included here in this conversation. And we're going to select, if you want it, you can have it. And if not, then I'll go on to the next person in the hat. So this has been, like I talked about this one a year and a half ago. Yep. It's, it's been my pain point. This was like the price of a small car, the Celine Phantom bag. And I've just never been able to stomach giving it up but how do you wear it i i have worn it once once like once what the because you know what i bought it when it was like the curve mm -hmm. <laughs> the trend curve but like already you know you have like all the um sam edelman's version of it and then yeah know, like they were not every every segment the, of the, the market. Market. Yeah. So now the knockoffs have certainly died down i think it's just a good practical bag again yep. but it's not mm -hmm. for me because i know that someone else here will appreciate it but someone else is going to really appreciate it so that is going to make me feel really really good doing this then I'm going to show you some of the things that I, but this is still very much within my right, DNA right, right. wheelhouse. You can still wear this, but you have other things, right? This one costs so much, though, that I really want someone to appreciate it. Like, be like, oh my God, you've just given me the bag that I'm going to carry every day. No matter right. what, I'm not carrying this every day. So if right. someone else can, that's going to make me happy. So here's some things that I bought that were expensive that I'm going to give away to our team as well. Yep. Um, that's good. So I bought the Mew Mew shoe here, and this is one where it's a real conflict of what my anticipation was when I bought it versus what the reality was. What, were you, what did you think you were going to wear it with, or I thought, how were you going to wear it? I thought this was going to be like a without fail for me. I thought that like every time I put it on, it was going to make me feel like myself and that I would live in it. But Like your Bayerns? <laughs> like a baby, Shame, yeah. Shameless so, plug. <laughs> well, but it, listen. So we know that both are. I guess yeah. me, me, like they both on, have a place. They both have a place, right? But what for me, if I'm going with without fail for me, because this might be mm -hmm. someone else's without fail. For me, if I'm gonna without fails to me, I have to take like a designer dress and chill it out. It has to take something like really push and modern and chill it out and for me when I was putting this on with those elements I felt a little too street style I didn't feel like myself mm -hmm. and so then that meant that I needed to have it become an in and out if it's not a without fail it has to be in and out it has to be my high fashion moment and the thing is for me this Birkenstock it's not my high fashion moment it's not what I would use for that currently yeah, I mean, but even at the time, I still wanted it to be without fail. What does Heidi Klum say? <laughs> you're either in or you're out. Yeah. And but. then, but, but in and out, it's like, and then you can be back in again. Right. So, so it's not in again for her, but someone right. else. But I'd rather someone right now make you Like, Shruti just went by. Like, she, Shruti would this love This is her vibe. Her. Oh, my God. This is her vibe. Soft, straight great. up. She would live in this without fail, no doubt. So hopefully, Shruti, I'll pull your name on the hat. But for me, I found that for a without fail, it just needed to be a little um, more chill, a little more bling free, so that it would bling tone free. things down. Should we make a t-shirt that yeah, says bling, bling free? free. <laughs> yes, exactly. Or at least all tonal. So this is why this was a purge yep. for me. Um, another purge is this little Manolo slide. And this was one that I really, again, I thought it was going to be a without fail mm -hmm. that I would really, really live in it. And what I realized is that I didn't because it it fought too much it's with... It's barely warm. I know. It's pathetic. Right. So um, it fought too much with my eased out. Like it was, it wasn't it's a good enough... Sweet irony here it's and the thing is like recognizing like in this one this has all of the classic but none of the chill and none of the modernity so it's it's straight up classic it's chill i mean sorry it's classic it's pretty right it's feminine um it's funny if you compare that and not that these are two different animals but like yeah you know 
Right, like, and you're kind this of is, like, oh, well, yeah, I don't I'm gonna pull up the the Wilbur the same. But even so, yeah, the Wilbur has the shorter the Wilbur, hair. Yeah. So you can be fooled and think, well, okay, they're both chill. Be chill. Shorter, they're both but... right. But for me, having something that is more squared off here meant like really pragmatic, like walking around. I can get so much done in it. Um, this can go with. I can wear this with the sock. This falls off all the time. The square toe gives it that level of modernity. So chill, modern, and classic. Yep. And this one is classic and feminine and For very sure. pretty. So what that means then is, okay, do I want to dive into that as an in and out and have it be my fashion moment? But those fashion moments go back with my without fails and that wasn't working. So this is going to go as a giveaway to someone. As bye-bye or pass yeah. on to someone else. Okay, now this one is a giveaway for a different reason. Um, this does pretty much hit all the things that I need. Like it's, you know, for me, evening time, it's a slide, it's simple, it's got the, the little, you know, it's a nice shoe. And um, I haven't worn it, it, literally never worn it. But thing is for me, and the, again, everyone's gonna be at different stages, this is my kryptonite. I have too much of this stuff in my closet. I have to pick and choose, and I ended up never wearing this one. So this is one where I'm like, do I I'll hold on to it in the hopes that one day I'll wear it, or am I gonna give it to someone in the office and feel really good about it? Not gonna lie, when she stepped away, I tried it on, and I thought like, oh, this is gonna be it. Like, I love this, and it was a little, not too much for me, but it doesn't mm -hmm. fit into how I would wear it now. It wasn't yeah. chill enough. Yeah, but you wear the Rudolph all the time. So well, I wear the Rudolph, but I also like I'll wear a whole Diamante sandal. Like, but I was thinking about a team talking about being feminine, and we both have on the alley today. Yeah, and you often wear the Aston, right? So these are two different. Yes, just currently. But it really has, you know, that square toe is that modern element to it, right. and it really gives that whole, you know, mixture. Will you go put on that white shirt and put on Absolutely. the white shirt? Okay. Yeah, all right, cool. Um, I'm going to show you one more here. Sorry to run off camera. But I'm going to show you here's like another um, in and out in terms of like setting your expectations of how much you're going to wear something. And a lot of you guys write to me because um, you've seen the, um, the Margiela jacket that I have and Sarah has as well. I'm gonna be honest, I even bought this in two colors. I had bought the lighter tan one a few years ago and then this one when it went super crazy on sale at Hughes. Oh, the jacket I have? I, but I, Just the light, okay. Okay, so this is a good example where when I showed you, oh, I have another picture from the person who um, sent me all the stuff from RL. And remember guys, this is, not trashing on any, uh, don't you guys like the next day be like, she's trashing Ralph Lauren, I'm not. But what I'm saying is Ralph Lauren, we all know leans really, right, and leans, and when you do that when you want that really classic, yeah. like classic vibe, and when you wear it, it's more with a touch of irony, right? Yeah, like, okay. like a cable neck. Right. Um, oh God, my screen is so nasty and dirty. So you sent me also this older Ralph Lauren blazer so here is the difference and this is why designers design with a certain aesthetic in mind and when you know that it will help you sometimes filter out what designers you buy and what shops you shop in okay. right and and this is why you know that this is why i don't like gigantic websites that tell you they've got seven thousand new arrivals okay. and i hate it when you know department store you walk in and they're like this is the $300 section, the $900 section. That is not helpful, because you need to know where is it chill, modern, and classic, yeah. where is it traditional, sexy, and edgy, whatever. So with this jacket, the reason why this is such a keeper, it's not worn every day, but I love it. You love I it. Love it. San Miguel, like, every day you wore it. But what you're looking for is um, there is certainly a modernity in this jacket, this oversized cut from Margiela, like it just, it absolutely, everything about it feels modern. It, Even the fringe feels, mo like I think it's because of the cut. The fringe is slightly wide, 
Uh, it's laser cut. Okay, when I wear it, I never out. feel like I'm wearing costume. costume. No. And so there is, um, then we talked a lot about the rule of three. Mm -hmm. And this definitely is falling within the rule of three. So what you've got here is you've got the brown suede element happening with the fringe. You have the oversize happening. And then you see like even the buttons, it's all tonal and quiet. So there's no extra seam. Yeah. There are no visible pockets. So when you talk about the rule of three, your eye is, it's not going all over the place. Yeah. It's actually and subtle looking at it. It's very subtle. And then you can see like with the, um, and this is much older Ralph Lauren, by the way, I'm gonna say that. But like this leather jacket, you've got all the pocket detailing, all of the seam detailing, and it's quite fitted to the body. So it's missing the chill element. So you're not hitting on chill modern and classic, and you've got like a lot. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. So this is why, you know, something that you don't wear every day can still hit all the marks for you and feel really great. Is there a question? You no, they love the extra large collar. They say that's why it works. Yeah, and what happens, I know a lot of you guys have, you'll send me visuals and you're like, okay, this, I'm gonna pull the trigger on. It's a vintage one. Like, is this gonna do what your Margiela? And it's like, oh, uh, yes and no. Vintage is, it's, it's a separate piece. Vintage is hard with this, and it's also hard with fast fashion or contemporary fashion because they tend to like slink it up. Yeah, yeah. They, they tend to over, over shrink it, all that kind of stuff. So this is one where um, I did buy the original at full price, mm -hmm. but the Ukes one I bought way at the bottom. Part. So this is kind of like, you know, playing the stock market here and knowing when to get all right, I'm going to let you guys um, it. Was like, oh, okay. baby Amy. I mean, guys, let's get her. I mean, that's just baby Amy and the little I'm friend. Gonna, I'm not going to tell who wore it better, but. But. Let's give it to her. Let's give it to her. So, Katrina and I are both wearing shirting right now, but also in like completely different ways than traditionally. I know. I know. And like, we didn't talk about doing this, we just both. But when you walked out, I was like, this is it. Like, you feel so good, and you just yeah. turn the game around, which yeah. I haven't done with my game, but it gives it a completely well, different know, vibe. I wear a lot of shirting. Like, I wear a lot of Tibby shirting. I wear Ralph Lauren shirting. She's, um, I feel like you do have a little heritage in there, but you flip heritage on its head. So this, I really love. This is our striped shirting Gabe from spring, um, so I'm literally wearing it backwards. Yes. I'm trying not to like fall into the camera. And I also have it tied up because I wanted to like create more, uh, a little bit of like, oh, some shape because the game is oversized. And what I really liked about this top also or that um, Tracy has designed it so you can really just like put your arms Super long through blanket. the sleeve. Yep. Um, and I think that just like, for me, then I don't have to roll it if I don't want to. I mean, I do have to be careful if I'm like reaching for some ketchup for my French fry, but you know what, like. <laughs> that is how risk. we measure everything. That's a risk I'm willing to take. Um, and so traditional shirt, I decided to go with the Sam jean, which I consider like my fundamental jean, but I did it in the bleach denim, which is our style, our um, fabrication for spring, so I think both of these styles are chill, modern, and classic, and I definitely think they play into that heritage idea. Um, but in again, but not just heritage. But not just heritage. It's like modern. It's modern because you know the sure the jean is definitely like a nod to like a Wrangler, um, really like Levi's vintage, car hardy, car hard, yeah. like a workwear vibe. Like <laughs> and the shirt, obviously, as we just discussed, is like super classic and traditional, yeah. but I think turning it around makes it work for me. And like, we definitely want the clothes in our closets to work for us and not the other way around. Like, if I have such a hard time figuring out how to wear something, I'm going to become frustrated and I'm gonna become angry and be like, why did I buy that? Right. Um, but you're not getting rid of things right away when it's not no. working. You're, just, you're testing them out. Yeah, like, I think flipping you it. can't be so, you can't be like, I don't know how to wear that. I'm just going to get rid of it. 
Or, and at the same time, if there's something that you really, really love and you're like, I just, oh, you're both And if you just like over, if you think that it's overused, like put it back for a little bit and think about a different way to wear it, like I've done with this Gabe shirt. Yeah. And so someone, real quick, was asking me how to wear belts. Oh, I'm wearing a belt. As well. And so I think that's like just having belts are a good thing. Probably like I would grab a good investment belt. Yeah. But it's also something that like I have to go to, special that one. Yeah, because I have to go to Texas this weekend. This was an old vintage one that I picked up for very little. And so I think that um, you know when you're unsure about something or when it's too directional in a way that like is not your vibe all the time, this is not where I would invest too much money totally. in. But I think in the good classic belt, totally. I would, you know? And I just want to say, when we say like an investment belt, we don't mean like a logo uh, yeah. emphasized like no. buckle. No. Not that there's nothing like wrong with that, but like that's not, like I'm talking about just like a really good leather, good croc, um, great buckle. So I'm purposely wearing this backwards because I'm wearing my loud shoes. And I just needed something that would like cinch the waist, mm -hmm. um, and then I just and you're breaking it up because I feel like you're adding a dimension. Yeah, I needed I needed to add something. Like I just wanted to again like add that yep. structure and like nod to the classics, and then I just really turned it around. So. I like that you have yours to the back. You didn't have yours through all the loops. Only the right. front two loops. I would wear this over something, mm -hmm. and also would probably buy a men's belt because I yep. think that's also an option. Men's belt. So, but real quickly, so on the logo thing. Mm, so, I, yeah, I think, well. <laughs> well, it's interesting because I think this taps into also like when do you dive into a trend mm -hmm. and how deep do you dive in and when does a trend, trends still want, you still want to be appropriate to your environment and you still want to um, feel like yourself, right? So I'm saying I was literally on the train this morning with Shiv from Succession, and by Shiv, I mean she was not Shiv, not Shiv. but it was so Shiv, and she was wearing, you know, the 7.30 in the morning, it was the sunglasses, this cream big linen vest, white denim cut off to here, and brown Manolos, a little black pocket bag, did I mention the big earring, uh, yes, sunglasses, sunglasses yes. yeah, in the morning, okay, and the hair and the knot. It was literally doing costume. Mm -hmm. It was doing the stealth wealth, but fully in costume. And now the beauty of like a stealth wealth trend is theoretically these should be the pieces you can live in for a really long totally. time. This the bottom of the pyramid. Yeah, and this but this individual was twenty two, so this was not a slow acquisition or anything. Mm -hmm. It was it felt very costumey. Anytime you are wearing sunglasses in the train at seven thirty in the morning, unless you've had an eye appointment, it tends to get. Or long costume, yeah, and also a sleeveless linen, mm -hmm. cream colored dress anyway. in the middle of Manhattan at it. 50 degrees in the morning also feels costumey. So the thing is, like, really to figure out, like, how can you, like, trends happen for a reason. They, they, they really are totally. born of moments and ways that we're feeling. They're normally not totally. like popped out of TikTok or mm -hmm. sphere. Really, I mean, I can kind of. speak. To, I don't know now. And now I've been like mulling over, like you know, the belts and kind yeah. of like, um, you know, whether it's like the Gucci or MS or whatever. And like for me personally, I think like my take on something like that would definitely be, you know, vintage. And maybe if it was like an Armani belt, it would be like such a weird color, and then it would be like obscure and funny for me. It would yeah. be like the ironic piece for me personally, yes. like knowing my personal style. I would not right. suggest that to anyone who's like exploring or doesn't know like what Don't start it, there. Like, I wouldn't start there. That's something that like Well, I remember one thing that I got so much heat on on Instagram like years ago was I had splurged on the H slide, the the Hermes H slide. And I, I splurged on it because I thought this is going to be my without fail. I will always throw it on. Like a Manolo though, it was a little too ladylike for me with the almond toe. Mm -hmm. the, totally. It was too ladylike for me. Now, what I did 
was I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna. This is my beach shoe. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna wear it on the beach. Okay. We were on vacation. I'm in the sand. I'm in the water. Which, by the way, because it's Hermes, like it could get salt water yeah, on it. Right. Like it, it held. It. it can. It held up to all of that. So. Someone was like, okay, that you're just being rude now. But the reality is, is that at 55, I can say that like, I've, you know, slowly built up and bought some pieces and I wanted to wear that one. I had really invested in it, but for me to wear it. So you found a home for it. Found a home for it. And then like beef it up, use it, wear it. And I did. Totally. Like, and never I mean, I'm, and it's still good. I have a pair, like I'm not a Manolo. But I have a like Manolo little kitten heel that has like some crazy embellishment on it, and right. I wear it with a Calder sweat pad, yeah. and I immediately and like a little sock, and then I'm like, oh, it's me. Yeah. So. So you can take those things and you can wear them in a way that was fully not intended. Totally. You can beat them up in a way that is fully okay. Remember, like once you bought the clothing, once you bought it, you own it. Well, actually, some people. Don't. Anyways, but what you if bought it, you own it. <laughs> you bought it, you own it. And so what that means is that if you have a problem shirt that's got too wide of a cuff, cut, cut that cut off, cut off. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people are very afraid to, whether it's to store it the designer's original vision, I don't know how much is about that, rather than really just afraid of like making a mistake. Darian had on Sam's yesterday and she's like, I chopped these off and it was so cute. It was her vibe. Yeah. Was, uh, I mean, I had Hannah literally like cut as I was wearing them yeah. on camera. But also I think, you know, we're talking about your suede jacket. I do think that like reworking fabric is, is a good way to get vintage to work for you. Yeah. Like if you have a good tailor, a good seamstress, if you know what you want, like talk to them, they can definitely help bring your idea. Yeah. And ultimately, DIY. DIY. Like the shirting. Yeah, it's like not it. high enough, just cut it up the side. I mean, Margiela, Come on, like let's be real. So, um, so I also want to talk about ones that are in and outs that might fool you really into thinking that they're whoops as well. And I think so. This is our example here with the white shirt. That this white shirt is something that we use as an in and out. It's, it's low. It's yeah. It's a perfect low key top because it is. It gets really like elevating your sweatpants here. Yeah. It's, it's, if I was wearing this out, like with the Sam jean, yes, I could be wearing a white t-shirt. Yes, I could be wearing like our more, like the Charlie traditional one. But the thing is, is this is more. This is like making the Sam jean more. If I were going out to lunch with friends, right. it's like, I showed up, I'm doing my thing. But I'm not too much, I don't feel overdressed. No, it's like the low key top. Yeah. This is the perfect low key top. And um, and so what makes it not a woof is that if I were going to Prada and if I were to pull out that banana skirt, for example, putting this top on with the banana skirt, that's an outfit. Like, it's an outfit. Like, yeah. it's a full on outfit. Sure. And so, you know, we love mixing that, like, super chill and with, you know, so if, that's why, like, you don't use this to pair with everything designed. You can wear things that are not wolves often and they not they can still not be a wolf. Like I want to wear this all the time. Yeah. But it's not gonna make it a wolf. Right. Because it will not go with literally everything in your I think closet. that's a big point. But here's the interesting thing. So I want to talk about like how you felt when you were you don't have to put them on. Oh I can if you want but no let's just talk about how you felt when you so sure. when you put those on. Right. Immediately so I had uh, the dark mint Stella's on with this shirt, and mm -hmm. it's fine, you know, it's okay, but I was not pleased. <laughs> you, well, you said that you felt a little too, um, like a little too formal, a little, a little too, too buttoned up. Too buttoned up. Yeah, I said too that, buttoned that up. That was the word, too buttoned up. So here's the thing, if you're judging like what to keep, what not to keep, you said you felt too buttoned up. Mm -hmm. But the thing is like, okay, we're in the office, and that's not the vibe that you want to feel in the office. I in this that. office, per se. <laughs> Especially in this office. Yeah. But I asked you, like, do you go to a bank to talk about a home loan? Do, do we, you go yeah. to school to talk about 
your, you know, with a, a parent teacher conference or totally. something. So there are moments in your life where feeling buttoned up is okay. fully appropriate and the vibe that you want. Because like, I love you in the sweatpants, but you know, I wouldn't go in with sweatpants and a top to ask for right. a home loan, but no. I absolutely would Give you wear all three options. options. Sweats, Stella, right. denim. So the idea is that when you're going into your closet, whether it's total work, whether it's play, whether it's out, all these different moments in your life, the really shitty things that we do every day that are not written up in a magazine, that are not talked about on TV, like that is our real life. So there yeah. is a moment where buttoned up is going to be needed. Needed. For sure. Needed. I'll give it back. Um, and then, what did you, you do? You want to talk about Oh my gosh. Oh. I had the hoodie on. I had on a, um, our hoodie in black with the Stella. And I was like, I don't know. It might, like, not too masculine, but I felt less, less buttoned up. So not buttoned up enough. Masculine also, was a word that you used. Yeah, and I think I had my hair back, and then what we did was we just added a little earring, and it just, I mean, you can't see it with this, but it just changed the vibe. So and when then I was like, I was going to, like, after work drinks. Exactly. So when you're thinking about what to keep, what to toss, what to whatever, buy, you really, like, go deeper into it. Like, you owe yourself that because you did invest in these items. You really want to make as much work as possible. You really do. And so, you know, figure out like, are there socks that you can twist something around with? Are there earrings you can twist something around with? Now, what you don't want to do though, is if at the end of all of this, if you end up with a ratio of like, okay, well I've rationalized that I've got this, you know, I've got, let's say you've got 200 items in your closet and let's say that you have 150 in and out. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, yay, now you've made 150 individual outfits for like only so many days in the year. So the thing is, is really start to pare down, though, those in and out and how many one-off events you're able to get out of them. So, you know, you really, you want your in and outs to work mm -hmm. pretty hard more than just one vibe. You want them to be having multiple vibes. Check to see those in and outs. Are they hitting at least the chill and modern of CMC? Two or out of modern three. and classic? At least two out of three. If you can hit three out of three, this is CMC, hit three out of three, and you know that like you're going to wear it a fuck time. Um, Should we talk about pasta? Well, yeah, because I think, well, no, hold on one second. Let me. Okay. I'm gonna end on the pasta. Because we're hungry. We had a little, <laughs> and we had a really good conversation today about yeah, we it. Did. But I think that what is important is to allow your mind to have some space when you go in your closet. And if you've got like this 150 outfit, but everything is like a one, 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 yeah. you most likely are going to feel a little anxious. Overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. It's not going to give you the clarity that you need to like really be able to present your point of view to the world. Um, so just constantly be peeling things back and um, asking why is it that you're going to something. We had an interesting discussion earlier because it was, you know, we said there are certain designers like that are amazing, but sometimes don't work for us. And uh, quite a few pieces that you guys sent me were from Sakai. Which, which we love. Which we love. And it, and it was interesting because I think Sakai, which actually Elaine's about to walk by, she would be like the Sakai queen. Oh, yeah, for sure. Queen. I mean, she could do everything. Right. She Elaine can do no wrong. Um, <laughs> oh, wait, we, we need breath before we go. But um, the thing about Sakai is that we tend to be really drawn to the uh, menswear fabrications. Yep. The color. The colors. The great mix of texture. Yep, and, I mean, it's great design, right? But Sakai is a very completed piece. I was saying like, as someone who's so pragmatic and, and creative, that like Sakai is like, if you go into the grocery store and you bought like the pasta bolognese, like completely made up. Already ready. Right? Let's go. So you're either gonna go buy the pasta bolognese or you're going to buy the pasta, the meat, the tomato, yep. the basil. 
I like the independent components because I can have pasta bolognese, but then my leftover isn't more pasta bolognese. No. Meatballs, hamburgers, pasta, pasta with, with garlic, garlic and butter. Clearly. Do you have notes on your notepad about the pasta? I do. I do. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, predominantly pasta. Yeah, it's all yeah. pasta, pasta, pasta. pasta. Yeah. But it's, I, I appreciate being able to mix it up more. To bring and it so, up and use it. But I gave an example, like Tracy, not Tibby Tracy, but the other Tracy we were with in Paris, mm -hmm. who's from Hong Kong. She wears this to kind, she makes yeah. it with like off-white and with comme de guerre, something like, she just does it in a way, like she actually turns it into something. But it's required. She wears it, she's not just like, she she's wears like it. going with her daughter right. to the playground. And for me, um, can you grab Brit before we go? We're gonna end yeah. with Brittany. Um, but she really, like she works it, she makes her own. I yep. can't do that because it becomes, like the headliner piece. And I want to do that, but I end up with pieces. Right. And not. right. So if I did, yep. like it would be, I mean, I would wear it and I wouldn't give it away, but I would have one piece like that. So it's really understanding. And then, and then Tracy from Hong Kong, she's like, well, I would have seven pieces like that. But and that's work. good because we are all different and we come to this from different points of view, which is good. Yeah. But if you really share in that DNA of chill, modern, and classic, then a lot of this is going to resonate with you and what to like keep and, um, and get rid of. The good ick though, you guys, I really do think that it really breaks this down nicely for you. It's a good read, I hope. Amy, someone um, sent me that by mistake. They were trying to send it to their daughter who's moving to Milan and struggling with style. So like people are sending it all over. Yeah. It's such a good, good, it's a good, good, good ick. A good, good yeah. ick. Okay, so I'm gonna leave on Brit here because Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> She's been eating her life. Oh my um, God. But a lot of uh, what you guys wrote to me, not a lot, because actually people are like really, really getting it, but some of the things that, were, that people were trying to figure out was just proportion. Yeah, how do I work in the proportions? And so you're wearing the brown, what is that? what's the name of Drapey jersey Dra tunic. Exactly, the brown drapey jersey tunic. And Katuri, um, you were wearing this last week. I want a skirt. skirt and with a sit. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I paired it back to a slimmer legging. Mm -hmm. um, but with the shoulder, I feel like it plays into the big. Yeah. Um, my slim is the legging, and then my skin is the sandal. Yeah. 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 And then you've got like all this like clean chicness, and then you've got the earring here, which yeah. is like giving it a moment too. And the earring really completes the whole thing so really like thinking about your closet how it all works together yeah. but everything here is chill modern and classic yeah. in some way and these were old pants that i had that i felt were a little too stiff for my current style and like how i feel mm -hmm. um so that's why i paired it back to a more modern trendy top yeah. um that i feel good in i know yeah. it's that's it it's amazing <laughs> it's so we're gonna end on that because <laughs> Right when I walked in this morning, I'm like, okay, this, this is incredible here. So um, I hope that this was helpful. Read the good egg. It will be even more helpful. And I'm sure you guys are going to have 5 million more pictures to send me and questions. But um, that's it. All right. Bye, guys. Thank you.